What's up, everybody? It's Priyon Joni. So let me paint a scenario for you guys. Let's say you're a DJ and you want to get into music production. You want to do your own remixes or you want to write, compose and produce your own music. So what's usually the first basic advice as to what to get? Number one, you know, you get your speakers, you get your studio monitors. They're different from the speakers that you use to play because they're more accurate. They sound more flat and they will tell you the truth as to how your mix sounds. What's another necessity to produce music? You need to get a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation. Basically, that's the software that you use to program, write, and record the music. So that's something like Ableton Live, FL Studio, Pro Tools, Logic. That's a digital audio workstation, DAW, DAW for short. What's another thing that you need? Maybe you need a MIDI keyboard so that you can write the notes in to your DAW. Maybe a MIDI drum pad, a little bit more on the accessory side. But what's the probably the most important piece of hardware in a production setup? That would be the audio interface. Uh, the audio interface is essentially the sound card. It allows you to take external devices, audio devices like synthesizers, uh, keyboards, instruments, it allows you to take an audio signal and it converts it into a signal that you can have as an input on your DAW, as well as it allows the DAW to have an output so that you can bring it to your speakers. That's what an audio interface does in a nutshell. Now, what I'm seeing from a lot of guys is that they're doing a shortcut approach where they have a laptop and they haven't quite chosen an audio interface yet. So what they do is they take a Y adapter plug it in to the headphone output of their laptop and then feed it straight to the speakers. Well, the truth is that's actually not the best solution and it actually doesn't give you the best sound. The reason for that is because aside from the fact that it's an unbalanced output, the headphone output of a laptop is so close to all the other mechanical devices inside the laptop that it's very, very prone to interference. That's why a lot of times when you hear people plug that auxiliary cord into their car, or even if they plug it in to a big sound system, you can hear little digital noises. And you know, you don't really want that when you're trying to do critical listening, when you're writing a song or mixing or mastering. What I'm here to talk about today is the fact that you don't necessarily have to buy an audio interface just for your production right away. You can actually hold that off until you're ready to get a good one because if you have DJ equipment and you use a computer, somewhere in your gear, there is an audio interface. So here are the three examples. If you use DVS, digital vinyl system, and you have one of these, a Rain SL3, or maybe something like an SL4, an SL2, a Denon DS1, or even the Pioneer interface for Rekordbox, this interface will actually work with your digital audio workstation. Now, this one is made for Serato, but you can use this as your audio interface for like Ableton or Logic. Now, it's pretty simple. There's nothing fancy. There's no balanced inputs, no balanced outputs. It's essentially three mono inputs and three mono outputs. And believe it or not, this is what I use in my studio right now because I'm waiting to get a bigger Thunderbolt interface. It's not the best solution, but it's a way better solution than using the headphone output on your laptop. Now, maybe you don't have one of these. What else could you use? Do you have a mixer with a built-in sound card? Say a DJM S9 or a DJM 900 or a Rain 62 or 72? Basically, all these mixers have a built-in sound card. You could totally use these as the input and outputs for your digital audio workstation. However many inputs are present on that mixer is how many inputs total you have, whether they're in stereo pairs or single mono. Let's say you don't use a Serato or Rekordbox or Tractor mixer, and you don't have an interface. What else could you use? You can use your controller. You can use your DJ controller. Now, if you have something simple like mine, which is an entry level controller, there are no inputs on this other than the microphone, but there is a stereo output. So at the simplest form, if you just need something to go out to your speakers, you have 
that option right here. Now, if you have a bigger controller like a DDJ SX, you can use the individual channel inputs as your input source, and you can use the outputs to go to your speakers or any other options you need. What's even cooler with the with the bigger controllers and the mixers is that you can even have balanced outputs. Now, I'm not saying this method is an equivalent alternative to having a proper recording interface. However, as a placeholder or good for now, one of these will really work. Now for my SL3, I unfortunately don't have balance outputs with the XLRs. So what I do is I actually take the outputs before it goes to the speakers and run them through a direct box to convert the output to a balanced signal. Now, some of you guys are gonna ask, how good does this sound? What I know is that anything that Serato allows to run, Serato DJ, is at the very least a 24-bit sound card. The things that I use on the inputs are stereo instruments like my keyboards, my synthesizers, my guitar multi-effects, and sometimes if I have an effects unit, I use one output to loop it through and go back to the input. And of course, like I said earlier, I use the output to run to my speakers. I've even done something really fun with this where I took all six outputs and did a 5.1 output setup. You can actually do 5.1 surround since you have six mono outputs. Little fun trick I did, but I digress. So let me show you guys how I actually have this set up. And once again, keep in mind, this is not my permanent solution. I'm just using this as a placeholder because for me, instead of getting a cheap interface that I'm gonna use for now, I'm just gonna use this as the placeholder and wait till I'm ready to get a big Thunderbolt interface with lots of inputs and lots of outputs the way I really wanna have it. So let's check out how this works. All right, so this is where I usually place my interface. USB and power. Right, this output actually goes to my EFX 500. This input comes from the EFX 500, so I have a loop. Now this output actually goes directly to the mixer here and off to the direct box. So this is my master output. And this set of RCAs here actually come from my keyboards. One of my keyboards is actually a mixer, so it feeds all my keyboards together, including when I have DJ gear. So that's what I have that for. And now that I have the interface set up, let's go over to the computer. So I'm gonna be using a MacBook Pro with Retina display. It's the 15 inch to late 2013 with 16 gigs of RAM and the dual graphics. And I'll be using Ableton Live, which is my digital audio workstation of choice. So normally when you use the Rain SL3 with your DJ software, like Serato DJ, you don't necessarily need any additional software in order for it to work with Serato DJ. However, if you want to use it with your digital audio workstation, such as Ableton, you need to download what's called a driver. And what a driver is, it's software that allows the computer to talk to the interface. And that's what allows it to show up inside Ableton. So that way you can assign the inputs and the outputs within your DAW. So first thing we gotta do, we gotta go to the Rain website and find the driver. And you have to make sure that you're getting the one for your type of computer. If it's Windows, you click the Windows link and you have to make sure that it matches the version of your operating system. I have High Sierra. I haven't updated to Mojave yet. So I'm gonna download the latest one, which is the July 2016 update. So let's download that. And it's not really that big, so it's pretty instant when it downloads. Open the zip. Now go ahead and install. Can you? Type in your password. It's gonna ask you to restart your computer, so continue installation. Okay, now that we're restarted, let's go to Apple, System Preferences, and you should see down here, this little icon of the SL3. Now it's saying the SL3 is not connected. I have this little issue where 
I just have to unplug the USB and we plug it in. Usually from a startup, it doesn't read it right away. So let's, oh, good. Okay, so now that it shows this, this means that the SL3 is working as an audio interface. See what happens when I unplug it. SL3 not connected, and then when I reconnect it, So now we can close that out. We're gonna open up our, our DAW, which is Ableton Live. And right now by default, Ableton Live is gonna be set to output from your computer speakers. And what we're gonna do is we are going to change that so that inputs and outputs are gonna be working from the audio interface, which is the SL3. So we go into Live. Go to preferences and right here under audio output device it should say built in zero in two out you open the drop down and you scroll down to sl3 six in six out and then click output configuration for me it's all enabled so we could say okay i think the default output for the mains is usually on the auxiliary output that's labeled on the SL3. So that's what I use to go out to the speakers. Now under audio input device, open the drop down and then scroll down to SL3. This is for your inputs. So go to input config and make sure they're all enabled. If they're not enabled, this is what it looks like. So, and hit okay. And that, in a nutshell, is how you configure your DJ interface into an audio interface that you can use for recording and music production. So what exactly does this mean? So let's hit tab, because I like arrangement view better. So as you remember, I have my keyboards plugged in to inputs one and two on the audio interface. So right here on the selector for the inputs on this audio track, if I start playing my keyboard with the volume up, I should start seeing the signal. And as you can see, it appears on one and two. And it also appears in single mono one and two. In this case, since this is a stereo instrument, I'm going to be selecting the pair, which is one and two. Now, we don't hear anything yet because the track input is not engaged. So let's do that by clicking in. So basically the way this audio chain works is my keyboard is connected to the audio interface. The interface takes the input, brings it into the DAW, allows me to play it inside the DAW, and then the audio output of the entire master goes back out through the interface and to the audio speakers. And that's how every audio interface works. Now the steps for a controller could be similar. You have to be mindful if your controller does not have an input, you might not be able to take your keyboard or external instruments and plug it into it. Uh, an entry level controller like the SB3 or the SB2 would not have an input. On something like a DDJ RR or a DDJ SR, the auxiliary input can be your inputs. On something bigger like the SX or the RX or the DDJ1000, each individual channel input can be configured as your audio inputs. And on a mixer like a DJM S9 or a DJM 900, it's practically identical to how you would do it on a controller. Each channel can be used as a stereo pair of inputs or individual mono inputs, as well as the auxiliary input could be used as individual inputs. Now, as far as the inputs go, why do you need more than maybe a pair of inputs? Let's say you want to record one synthesizer and then you want to record on another track a drum machine. What multiple inputs allow you to do is to be able to record two or more devices and have it record on two or more separate multiple tracks, which is why it's called multi-track recording. And you can do that simultaneously. So if I wanted my drum machine to show up on track one, and I wanted my synthesizer to show up on track two, we can record them all together and they'll show up on two separate tracks. And I know that's a little bit more advanced than I meant for this video to be, but that's what an audio interface is used for in a nutshell. 
And if you're a DJ with a DJ interface, a DJ controller, or a DJ mixer with a built-in sound card, you already have an interface that you can use to start recording and producing your own music today. I'm hoping not to see any more Y cable from the laptop go into the speakers. You guys already have the better gear that you can use for that purpose. And what's cool is you can use your DJ gear for more than one use, not just DJ. Oh, and one last thing to add. In this video earlier, I showed you guys how to access the driver utility going through the Apple system preferences. For rain devices, this is how it's done. As you can see here, I got one for a 62, SL3, SL2, SL4. But for Pioneer devices, they actually don't show up here. So to access the driver utility for Pioneer devices, you go to the Applications folder. Let's arrange this by name. Scroll down to Pioneer. And then whatever the device is that you're using, let's say an SX3, you can access the driver utility there. And I don't have one connected right now, but for Pioneer gear, this is the way to do it. For Rain gear, it's through the system preferences. Other companies might do it differently, so you'll just have to check out how they do it. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you got anything to add, you got any questions, or you just don't like this idea, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, be sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, this is Priyon Joni signing out. You guys take care.